President-elect Joe Biden will reportedly name longtime adviser Tony Blinken as secretary of state. He previously served as deputy secretary of state for President Obama. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Lewis. And going forward, I will be working with The Benjamin Dixon Show to bring you daily breaking news content about current events and things going on in the United States and around the world so that we are all informed and we know what our government is doing and we are keeping an, a watchful eye on the actions of the United States government. So today it was announced that the Biden transition team has selected Tony Blinken, the former deputy secretary of state in the Obama administration to be the next secretary of state. So he's getting an upgrade in his uh, job position uh, to be, uh, like I said, the next secretary of state. And I want you to watch this video from Democracy Now, where Amy Goodman does a really good job at breaking down a little bit of his past. And I'm going to bring up an article as well once the video is over to explain to you why I am skeptical of this selection and why we need to keep a watchful eye on all of these selections going forward. So take a look. President-elect Joe Biden will reportedly name longtime advisor Tony Blinken as secretary of state. He previously served as deputy secretary of state for President Obama. Earlier this year, Blinken spoke with the Hudson Institute about foreign policy challenges and how he views the United States' role in the world. Simply put, the big problems that we face uh, as a country uh, and as a, uh, as a planet, whether it's climate change, whether it's a pandemic, uh, whether it's the spread of uh, bad weapons. To state the obvious, uh, none of these have unilateral solutions. After he left Obama's White House, Tony Blinken co-founded West Exec Advisors, a consulting firm which helps Silicon Valley companies pitch for Pentagon contracts. In an Intercept profile from 2018, William Hartung, an arms control expert at the Center for International Policy, said, quote, the revolving door is a longstanding feature of the military-industrial complex, and it can lead to distorted policy decisions based on the financial interests of former government employees, unquote. Blinken was also a top Senate aide to Biden in 2002 and 3, when Biden was pushing for the invasion of Iraq. So, as Amy Goodman explained, uh, there was an article from The Intercept written in 2018 that I want to go into a little bit more detail about, because it goes into this revolving door, this this military industrial complex, because there's the the military aspect of it. And then there's the industrial or Silicon Valley aspect of it as well. So as, as it says here, Silicon Valley firms seeking lucrative business opportunities with the Pentagon face a range of obstacles, not least the morally fraught choice of enabling a military led by President Donald Trump with the latest technological solutions. Enter a group of former high-level officials from the Obama administration who are helping to bridge the divide between tech firms and the Defense Department through a new company called West Exec Advisors. And then further down the article, it says the sort of initiatives West Exec is posturing itself to spearhead, however, have grown controversial. In recent months, Google has faced an internal rebellion over its work with the Defense Department to deploy cutting edge artificial intelligence technology for drone warfare, part of a Pentagon initiative known as Project Maven. The internal uprising led to Google executives announcing last month that the firm would not renew the military contract when it expires next year. And West Exec has found itself at the center of the storm with the consultancy's official officials deeply involved with the project and wading into the media firestorm that was set off by the Google employees objections. Now, let me stop there. Uh, the first problem is this relationship with between Silicon Valley and the Defense Department and, and other uh, apparatus, you know, uh, other elements or arms of, of the military industrial complex uh, where uh, it could be an app that we use that we don't even know is collecting our data uh, that's being where that data is being uh, harnessed by the military to do all sorts of things that we're just not privy to. These companies like Google, Facebook, you know, whatever the case may be, they're they're not beholden to anyone. You know, so this is a problem, of course. And, of you know, 
Blinken co-founded this company that was involved with this. And a paragraph down, it says West exact story will be a familiar one for those who keep track of how private companies wrangle government contracts through the help of officials walking through the revolving door between public service and business that take a large amount or take take in large amounts of government cash. So, of course, this is a problem. This is an ongoing problem. And this is something that is being introduced into the Biden administration. So I also want to read this article uh, that was published yesterday on the 22nd from The New York Times. And it says Mr. Blanken has been at Mr. Biden's side for nearly 20 years, including as his top aide on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and later as his national security advisor when he was vice president. In that role, Mr. Blanken helped develop the American response to political upheaval and instability across the Middle Middle East with mixed results, and that's putting it lightly, in Egypt, Iraq, Syria, and Libya. So, of course, let me stop there. Anyone that was involved in Libya, Syria, and Iraq, in my personal opinion, has no place in any current administration and to know that he was uh, involved with that whatever his his role whether it was a large role or small role may have been uh, none of those foreign policy blunders should be rewarded with an upgraded position from deputy secretary of state to secretary of state and but this one paragraph after that paragraph is something it's the only thing I agree with that he stands for, which is it says, but chief among his new priorities will be to reestablish the United States as a trusted ally that is ready to rejoin global agreements and institutions, including the Paris Climate Accord, the Iran nuclear deal and the World Health Organization that were jettisoned by Mr. Trump. So uh, we know that Trump destroyed the Iran nuclear deal, you know, our relationship with the WHO and the uh, Paris Climate Accord. We all we need to be involved in all three of those things. So I don't have a problem with that. But Biden said during the primary that nothing will fundamentally change. And he continues to prove that to be such. This is something that we need to stay on top of. I don't want to uh, belabor this point any longer just to say that uh, we need to keep a a watchful eye on these uh, appointments, these selections, because a lot of these people are in this for their own self-interest or to forward the military industrial agenda.